give Jesus the highest praise. Come on, do better than that. Give him the highest yeah. praise. Aren't you glad to be in Jesus church every day? Come on, aren't you glad Jesus is building his church in the gates of hell? The gates of government, the gates of oppression, the gates of terrorism. Right now, while you're here in a public school, there are Afghan Christians underground by candlelight, but the gates of hell shall not prevail. Jesus is building his church. Oh, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Well. Welcome to church today, everybody. I'm so happy to welcome you today. If you're online today, welcome to church. Come on, everybody in the room. Say hello to everybody online today. We love you. You're part of our family. Thanks for being here. Welcome to our brand new location at Van Robb School in beautiful Fair Oaks Ranch, Texas, everybody. Oh, yeah beautiful place beautiful location if we haven't had a chance to meet my name is Mitch along with my amazing wife Brandy we pastor here I'd love to meet you after church and they're bringing out chairs everywhere uh, overwhelming crowd today look around come on give God praise for that ago in October of 2015 Brandy and I put our our three year old little girl and our one year old little boy in the car we drove them from Austin, Texas and I had a good job the kind with health insurance and dental, come on somebody y'all know what I'm saying we had a good job and we knew God was calling us to play in a church, we really didn't know where I wish I had kind of that Nineveh moment, you know, that Jonah had, like, you know, go to Nineveh or what. I didn't have that. So we just got in the car and started driving from Austin, from South Austin, and came down 35. That wasn't it. If you've ever been on 35, you know why. And we got on 1604 and started driving. That wasn't it. If you've ever been on, even the Holy Spirit doesn't live on 1604. Even he's not there got to the intersection of 1604 and I-10 started moving into the hill country north of 1604 and it was just that overwhelming feeling that we knew from the Holy Spirit this is it this is where God's calling us to build a spirit filled life giving church we sold everything I went and told my pastor I remember telling my pastor hey I think we're going to leave and start a church he said do you know anybody I don't even know how to pronounce Bernie I sure don't know anybody here I said no we don't know anybody he said do you know where you're going to meet I said no we don't you know where you're gonna live? I said, no, I don't. I don't have a lot of that. I don't have a lot of answers right now. He said, you realize you have two two small children, and they're gonna keep eating. Like that's the the trend is they're gonna keep eating as they grow up, you know. And so, have you thought this through? I said, I don't know if I thought it through, but I prayed it through. And I know God's called us. So December we moved here. Nine months later, we had built a team of 35 people. We called the launch team, and we started a church at Kendall Elementary School in, in Bernie, Te yeah, Kendall, yeah, another elementary school. And listen, it was dirtier than this, come on. Like it, this is a brand new beautiful school. That one was not, all right? And it was amazing, and the first day, it reminds me, reminds me of this day, because we, we ran out of chairs, we had to move walls, ran out of parking spots, we send everybody home. I mean, it was crazy, it was dumb. We should have planned for bigger, I just didn't, we didn't have two services, it took me six months to start two services, but... But we did, and hundreds of people came. And then, and then, and then we they kicked us out. And so we went to the movie theater. You can't have church in a movie theater. That's stupid. And 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 then we grew, and hundreds of people came. I'm telling you, every year we were doubling. We were baptizing people by the hundreds, and it was an amazing season. And then, and then COVID hit, and then they shut our theater down and kicked us out again. <laughs> then we moved to 1604 and I-10, and it was it was a desert season. We thought, God, you know, I don't know if this is. Where, but hundreds of people came and so many people got saved and so many people got baptized there it was just an amazing season and then they kicked us out in April notice the trend here people are meeting Jesus and they're kicking us out now listen li listen to me listen, this, is a, this is something I want to teach you when it, when it gets hard when it gets tough 
when the opposition starts coming, you know this, it's almost time for a breakthrough. The enemy always has the worst right at the end. He puts the best foot forward right at the end of the breakthrough. So he said, God, where do we go? Back to Bernie, back to Fair Oaks. And, and there's, I think, nine schools or seven or nine schools. We, we called every school here. We met with everybody. We got no's everywhere but this one school. This one. We had, we had broke in this school when they were building it. Well, break-ins, it was the unlocked, okay, whatever. But it wasn't built, all right? And we started walking around a couple of years ago. And now here we are having church here. But, but I still said, God, I, I don't want to keep moving this church portably. I mean, there's hundreds of people who come here. God, there's hundreds of families. God, there's so, there are thousands of people in the hill country who need hope and life. And they need a spirit-empowered church. And they need a church where they can come just like they are. And God doesn't leave them right where they are. And they need a church full of joy. And a church where everybody's welcome and anything's possible. And a church like this. God, we need a church. Listen, and we don't need to get kicked out again. I actually told God that. And so 21 days ago, 21 days ago, on the top of my prayer list, like it's been for the last 11, 21 days, six years worth of 21 days of prayer, I put on the top of our list, God, we need a permanent home so I can move this church permanently. God, I, I got to give these people a home, not just so that we have a home, not so it's not hard work. No, we're, we're not afraid of hard work, but I got to have a home. So we, we, we put our foot down. We, we put some concrete in the ground and we say, we're going to build a lighthouse for hurting people. And this is going to be a place of hope, a haven of hope for people who need it. A place where marriages are restored and lives are picked up and people come to God. And I said, God, I can't get kicked out of another venue. God, if Van Rob kicks us out, what are we going to do? It was 21 days ago. Today's day 22. I got news to tell you. After five years, everybody, we've signed a lease. We're moving forward. We got a home. We got a home. Come on, give him a shout of praise like he's a miracle worker. Come on, lift him high like he answers prayer. Thank you, Jesus. everybody they can't kick us out of this one <laughs> that's our home about six or seven months from now we're going to move into there and listen that's not the end that's just the beginning it's day one it's day one of reaching people and praying for people and helping people and serving people and loving people into a life-giving relationship with Jesus. It's only just begun. Touch three people you sit next to and say, we got a home, 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 we got a home. Have a seat, grab a seat. We got a home, everybody. We got a home. Now here's what I want you to hear. You say, what does it have to do with me? It has a lot to do with you. If you're a member of our church family, you've been with us since the very beginning. Some of you have been with us since a few months in, and then every location, thank you, every location since then you've been with us, and some of you traveled with us up and down I-10, waiting on a church building, and now here we are together. So the exciting news, I tell you, on our first Sunday is this is our last portable location till we move into our home, everybody. Thanks be to God. Here's what it means to you. If God can work a miracle for us, God can work a miracle in your life. Over the last 21 days, I've heard of miracles where God's answered prayers that we, we've been praying for years sometimes. God answered prayers for months. I, I need a job. So somebody put on their prayer request. I remember dozens and hundreds of prayer requests every morning. We would pray over at 6 a.m. Somebody said, pray for a job. I need this job. i got to have this job. And then 21 days of prayer, they got, they got a phone call and got the job that God's been, got, got, God had just for them. They thought they'd lost it before, and then God answers. And, 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 then, and then pray pray against COVID and my family and this this person has COVID and in, in our family, it's touched our family as well my wife's uncle and they're taking him to the hospital and it doesn't look good and it looks terrible and things are going bad we put his name on that prayer request in 21 days of prayer, y'all yesterday he went home whole and healed in Jesus name, come on, it's miracle season and then and then somebody put a prayer request and says we're, we're, we're praying for a, a new home now, I remember this, this young couple, they've been in our church for a while, been a part of our team, actually since, um, since we're in the first elementary school, and, and um, been a part of our church, and they were a new young couple, and, and they said, man, we need, a, 
we want a home. We've been renting, and then and then we moved in with family and moved, and just when we want a home for ourselves, and they were having such a hard time. You ever tried to buy a house right now? I mean, you know it's just a hard time and a hard season. We need a home, and then and then at the end of 21 days of prayer, this this past week, they said, "Hey, Pastor, guess what? God answered in 21 days of prayer. We're in contract. We passed inspection. We got a brand new home. Everybody, listen. God's a miracle worker. God's a miracle worker, and that that." home that you see behind me is an answer to prayer. And I want to I tell you about it for a few minutes. My clock's wrong, so I, it says I have 1,383 minutes. So I hope y'all brought a snack. <laughs> that land right behind us that you see, matter of fact, play, play the video one more time behind me. That, that land that, that is there, it's 2.86 acres. You'll see this built on. That's a sheep farm. That's I-10. This is actually the exit we started our church on. And about four years ago, a member of our church came to me and said, I want to buy this land. And would you pray with me? And so we went and walked this land together. I've been on this land for four years. I've been walking it and praying. And I said, God, if it's your will, let him get it. And he bought it uh, four years ago. And then he just kind of sat on it, didn't know really what we were going to do. And, and then he said, hey, pastor, I think I'm supposed to build a building, but I want the church to lease it. Like, I want, I want, it, I want some of it to be part of the church. And obviously, uh, you know, he's got other commercial ventures, but I want the church to have a piece of, of this building. And so we drew this building together on, on paper, back and forth and back and forth. And life happened and things moved on. And, and, and we really didn't know if this was going to happen. So, so we built it, uh, or, or we, we drew it on the paper. And then, and then we thought, we'd, let's call the city and make sure this is going to work out. So we called the city of Bernie. And really, that should be the end of the story. I mean, just if you've ever dealt with a municipality or especially trying to build in the city of Bernie, it's almost impossible. I learned a lot of history. Matter of fact, I learned that in the last 150 years, there hasn't been a church, a brand new church built in the city limits in the past 150 years. I was the second pastor in the history of this settlement to pray at the opening of the city council. This area was founded by a group called Free Thinkers. They were actually atheists, German atheists. There's a spiritual stronghold. You don't have to believe in that. I'm not trying to get weird, but I'm telling you, there's a demonic spiritual stronghold in, in, in this area. And so I started meeting with people. I met with the old mayor who was here, and he said, I'm sorry, you just can't. This building, this is not going to work. This area, it's an industrial park. We only have a little bit. We're not putting a church there. Matter of fact, we're not putting a church in the city. So I started asking, well, how did this church get? Well, they didn't, they, they, they weren't in the city. Well, how did this, well, they, they, they did this. And how did that church expand? Actually, the Catholic church in the city of Bernie sued, went all the way to the Supreme Court to be able to expand and build in Texas Supreme Court. So we started m meeting with city councilmen and meeting with lawyers. And long story short, I prayed. The God of 21 days, four years worth of 21 days of prayer. Just God, God, move everybody. God, open up a door. God, move everybody out. So in that 21 days, I'm not telling you I'm responsible for it, but over the last four years, we have a new mayor and five new city council members, okay? Whatever that means. You either, you either work with God's church or you won't get reelected. I'm just telling you, okay? That's, the way, that's just the way God works. I don't know what else to say. There's new, so anyway, so the whole thing. So we started all over. So I met with this mayor. I remember having breakfast with Mayor Hendren, Bernie Grill, and I sat across from him. I said, "Mayor, here's we we just we want to build church so that so that we can reach more people." And he said, "Tell me where." And I told him this, and he kind of had that look on his face of, "I don't know." This was two years ago. He said, "I'll tell you what, I'm gonna do everything I can to get you in this building." That's two years ago. In the middle of that time, you know what happened. We called everybody else. The last communication I had with the city of Bernie, I, I had a letter from their lawyer. Your boy almost went to jail, okay, everybody? I was, I was there, all right? I was that guy, okay? I was going to be on the front page. And, and the lawyer said, this is the, this is the law. If you don't like it, sue us. And I said, well, we're not going to do that. We're just going to pray you out of here. So for two years, the city of Bernie has reworked the entire development code and the entire master plan for the city of Bernie. And about four weeks ago, everybody, we adopted a new 30-year uniform development code. And the entire reason, I believe, now they think it's something different. The whole reason I know we adopted all new zoning in Bernie is we can put a church anywhere we want to in the entire city limits of Bernie, Texas, everybody. I prayed the whole thing out of there. You prayed the whole thing out of there. All right. So city council approves, and then we talk to the mayor, and we go, man, this is it. This is the miracle. And he said, whoa, 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 whoa. We still got to get this plastic painting and zoning, and, and the, we still got to decide if this is a special use permit. There's probably still more 
court, more stuff, more city council, more approved, more city, more whatever. Okay. 21 days of prayer, day one, 21 days of prayer. I put at the top of my prayer request, God, we need a building. I need that building. I've been walking that building. It's built. It's here. I'm ready for it. God, give it to us. Week two, 21 days of prayer. I got an email on a Friday afternoon. I wasn't even in town. I got an email on a Friday afternoon. And they said, listen, we don't really know what happened, but our architect and consultant went down to planning and zoning, had a big meeting. All I can tell you is, there's no more roadblocks. There's no more meetings. You got everything you need. Go build your church. It's ready to happen. Everything's approved. It's time to move forward. Come on, give God praise for that, everybody. Come on, it's miracle season. It's miracle season. It's miracle, miracle, miracle season. So let me give you an update about where we're at. We've been praying for years. We've been building and training. And January of 2020, you remember 2020? It was uh, nine years ago. Anyway, January 2020, we actually bought land. A lot of people don't know this. Our trustees signed a contract on land. We had bought four and a half acres of land on Scenic Loop Road. And we were in contract. They'd already cast our check. We'd, we'd brought all of our team out. We really felt it. And, and then I started praying. We're in January, 21 days of prayer, and I'm praying. And I just don't feel it, Rick. I just don't know. I, I just something. And I remember about 15 days away from closing. This true story. A member of our team came to my office and said, Pastor, can I ask you something? I said, sure. He said, you don't, you don't want this land, do you? I said, no. I mean, I want it. I just don't feel it. It's just not right. I don't know what to tell you. We're, we're almost at closing, and it's just not the right thing. Hey, you can have the right thing at the wrong time, and it be wrong. Amen. The worst thing that can happen to you is God answer some of the prayers you've been praying. I said, I just don't feel it. Let's back out. We backed out of the contract. I'm sure there was a lot of disappointment on our team. I was disappointed. I spent all of February in 2020 just down in the dumps and disappointed. You remember February 2020? We had lives. Everybody remember that? We got to move around and do stuff, and nobody yelled at us. No one even knew who the CDC was. I mean, no, nobody even cared. <laughs> Y'all don't even know. <laughs> our church grew incredible. January and February, it was, I'm telling you, we were overwhelmed at the movie theater. About to add a third service. It, we, we, trying to move out of there, it was incredible. Sometimes in the seasons that are hardest battles for you, God sends His biggest blessing. And then March hit, and you, you know the story, in COVID we shut down. and We were the only church that had church on March the 15th in, in all of the city. Um, I say we had church, about half of y'all came. The rest of us were at home watching TV. But anyway, we, we had one final service, and then we spent seven months online. Had to move to another location. And all of that was preparing us for this. Let me encourage you on something. There's some stuff you've been praying for and waiting for that you thought it was supposed to work one way. You need to thank God it didn't work out like you thought it was going to work out. You ought to praise God that God, I know that if this didn't happen, you've got something better for me. Let this be a word for you. That if God didn't answer this, it's because God's got something better on the way. That if God keeps you out of this, it's probably the hand of the Lord protecting you from something. That God has something better for you. So in June of 2021, City Council approves we get the miracle, paves the way. We sign a long-term lease, and the rest is history. Let me give you a little bit about uh, th this particular facility. Uh, we have leased a little over 9,000, between 9 and 10,000 square feet of it, and we're currently in the design and engineering phase. Um, it is built on the outside. You saw that. We are just uh, building out the interior, but we have to build it completely out. It's a shell. Uh, there's floors and a roof and walls, and that's it. Uh, but we're, our architect's very close to finishing plans that we can get engineering and then get towards a building permit. Uh, we're going to build a worship center that seats hundreds of people. Now listen, every time I look at this floor plan, I don't see seats. And I want to I encourage you today on our final first day in a portable place. I want to encourage you. I don't want you to see the way it currently is. I don't want you to see a school. I don't want you to see portable seats. I don't want you to even see seats in the auditorium. I want you to see lives being transformed. I want you to see salvations. I want you to see people being delivered. I want you to see conferences for men where men become men of God and women and women of God and kids conferences and vacation Bible schools and Bible studies and marriage conference and freedom conference. I, I want you to see, hey, we're not just building a space to have church. We're building a space to be the church. We're building a space where God could use us to reach 
more people. We're building large classrooms, more classrooms than we've ever had before. As a matter of fact, we shrunk everything else that we could build kids' rooms. You know why? Because if the best thing that we do as a church family, it may not be something we build. It may be somebody we raise. There's somebody right now in a portable classroom that's the next evangelist and missionary and church planter and world changer and musician and worship pastor. And Listen, we're going to raise a generation of world changers and and, and, and and people who began early a life-giving relationship with Jesus. I got saved when I was eight, baptized when I was eight, baptized in the Holy Spirit. Listen, there's, I, I just know it's our calling to raise up a generation of world changers. So we're building incredible kid space, expansive lobby spaces where... You can, you can meet people and build friendships and have community. Church is not a place you go to. Church is a family you belong to. Amen. Church, you're, I'm already preaching. You're not taking notes. Church is a, church is a place you, you don't just attend on Sunday. It's a family that you belong to. And we, get to, we, get to hey, we get to stay around and we don't have to take any of it down, everybody. We get, to like, we get to leave it on the walls and just walk out and lock the doors. Like we own the place. We've never done that before. I'm locking up our first day just because I think it's awesome. I just, I can't wait to just leave it all there and it's going to be there next week. We're building all of that. We're building a, a, a dream team space for our dream team. The incredible group of volunteers. This, this Yesterday, there were over 80 people in this room praying and asking God and making space and building and setting up and taking down. Come on, we're making more space for the dream team to grow and people to get on mission and discover their purpose. And we're here to equip believers. Listen, here's why. Because I know within 30 miles of this building and that building, there are hundreds of thousands of people who are empty. And we're not building a space so we could put empty chairs. We're building a space so God can fill empty hearts. So God can fill empty hearts because people are lost and people need hope and people, it's more than just, and we're not going to wait till we get there. By the way, let me let you in a little secret. The next six or nine months are going to be the biggest revival we've ever experienced in the history of our church. Come on. We're going to keep reaching people. We're going to keep building people. We're not waiting on that building to create more spaces for life change. We'll bring out chairs in the middle of a second service and do everything we can to reach people. A new building is not the end. A new building is an opportunity. We're not waiting on the building to start being a real church. We are the church right now. We just need a bigger locker room where we can encourage more people, strengthen more people, build more people, and build the army of God to reach into the world and make a difference in your world. Can I get a better amen, everybody? That's what we're building together. So we're, we're, our, our team is together. We have a building team. We don't really have committees, we, but we do everything by team here. And so we put together a building team and our trustees, and they're working on architecture. My staff has been working for months and months on plans and architecture and engineering and building permits, and we're interviewing general contractors. We're going to be ready. Here's, what, here's, here's the directive I gave our team in this. I don't want anybody waiting on us. I don't want nobody waiting on us. Come on. God doesn't even have to wait on us. We're going to be ready to go with a yes the moment he opens the door. Say amen to that. There's something about you being ready to receive a miracle. There's something about you being ready to receive from God. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to you. Listen to me. There's something about you having your, your front foot forward and saying, I don't, I'm not just praying for my marriage to be fixed. I'm working on my marriage getting fixed. I'm not just praying for my child to come home. I'm, I, I'm anointing their, the bedroom door with oil. I'm, I'm begging God. I'm, I'm, I'm inviting them to church. I, there's something about being in the right position where when God opens the door, you're ready to walk through the door. Where when God gives us the, that, that building, but we're ready to go and swing hammers and make it happen. It's our plan right now. It's our plan right now to dedicate that building an Easter of 2022, everybody. I cannot wait. We're going to get in there as quickly as we possibly can. Come on, give God praise for that, everybody. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. All right. So here's what you can do. Here's what you can do. I'm, I'm preaching now, so take notes. If you don't take notes in church, Take notes in church. I don't know why you wouldn't take notes in church. Here's the first thing I want you to do, and that's pray. Some people say, Pastor, all we can do is pray now. All we can do. That's all we ever had, everybody. Oh, the only hope we ever had is pray. Pastor, I think it's uh, right now it looks like the only thing this situation is going to change is if we pray. Well, that's the only way it was ever going to change, everybody. Prayer changes everything. Prayer is not our last resort. Prayer is our first response. We don't go to prayer when we've tried everything else. We go to prayer before we try anything else. 
We say, God, what would you have to do? And listen, I want you to pray. I want you to pray for our city. I want you to pray. I will pray. Don't, don't make me pray another mayor out of here. I will do that. I want you to pray for our city and planning and zoning. I want you to pray for the right contractor. I want you to pray for a quick timeline. I want you to pray for provision and financial means. I want you to pray for protection. I want you to pray. Listen, here's what I know. Here's what I know when you take spiritual ground. When anytime you take spiritual territory in your life, I know the enemy has an encampment there. I know he will not give up ground willingly so I just expect that we're going to enter into a season of warfare but in Jesus name the gates of hell are not going to prevail against the church come on we're going to keep taking ground an inch at a time we're going to keep moving forward I want you to pray I want you to pray against the assignment of the enemy I want you to pray against every stumbling block I'm inviting every we have a prayer team matter of fact I have intercessors that are praying for me right now every time I preach the gospel to you they're praying for me they prayed for you this morning they touched every chair in this room they're praying but I want to invite everybody in this church every person at church online I want you to join the prayer team come on we need you in this season let's cover these next six or nine months in prayer amen everybody say amen to that all right here's the second thing I want you to give I'm asking you to give I'm asking you to give in this season over the next couple of weeks we're going to be rolling out our generosity campaign and the initiative that we have and vision and I believe we're going to be in the middle of a miracle listen to me look at my eyes we are in a miracle in motion we are in a miracle in motion God is making a way. And we are not going to stop it by holding back the blessing God has. I refuse to hold my hand tight when God wants to open up, when God wants to pour out blessing in our life. I refuse for our church. It's why we are giving more than we've ever given to missions. It's why we're, we're, I'm, we're sowing in. Matter of fact, just two weeks ago, there's a new church planting in San Antonio. We already gave to their new church plant. They don't even have a building, don't even have the day they're going to open the church. Why? Because we're going to keep our hands open. We're going to keep our hands open because God's got a miracle for us. God's going to use people. We're going to keep sowing, and God's going to keep blessing. Say amen to that. But you're a part of the miracle. You're a part of the miracle. You're a part of the miracle. I'll be really honest with you. The last five years, we've lived well beneath our means. We've been very frugal. And being portable has let us be nimble. And all we did in year one, we got a small little office space. And, and, and we didn't hire any staff early on. Matter of fact, uh, Aubrey's, he's worked every part-time job for the first couple of years of this church in this whole city. I mean, he's just, he worked full-time for me for free and, then, and, and, and built this church and then, and then worked somewhere else. And then we were able to hire staff, and now he's on our staff. And now we have five full-time staff members, thanks be to God, who help build the church and empower people to, to walk out their purpose. And, but we just, we got a small little office space, but we've saved, listen, over the last five years while giving to missions, while planting churches, while giving away the first 10% of every dollar we make, we give away. Every single dollar, the first 10% of every dollar we get, we tithe to missions. We give to, to planting churches around America. We give, to, we, we give to places like Afghanistan. We give to places like Haiti. We give, we give to places that need, matter of fact, we give to missions partners like Convoy of Hope, who I just had a conversation with, who I just heard from. They're on the ground right now in Houma, Louisiana, just outside of New Orleans, and Hurricane Ida, while we're here, is ravaging through, uh, uh, th through the state of uh, uh, Louisiana today and tomorrow. And our missions partner, Convoy of Hope, is already on the ground with tractor trailers, food, water, generators and we didn't have to ask you for anything because we take the first 10% of everything you give and we're ready to respond in Jesus name thanks be to God for that everybody come on God gets the glory for that but doing all of that building the church, hiring staff, moving hundreds of people getting saved we've still been able to save thanks to God we've been able to put $350,000 back for this day come on give God praise for that everybody I'm so Come on, that deserves more than that, everybody. I'm thankful to God for that. But we still have a gap. There's a gap. It's, it's a vision gap. It's between what we have and the vision that we have. It's, it's the gap between the resource that we have and the vision that we have. By the way, there's always going to be a gap in your life between what you know God has called you to do and the resource you have. There's always going to be a gap for that. And God always uses people to help in those seasons. And God's going to use you. And we need to raise about $300,000 more in this season. And I know you're looking thinking, man, that seems like a lot. Seems like what are we going to do? But listen to me. I'm not asking you for anything. Now, this is a different kind of church. And some of you are here for the very first time. You think, man, that's weird. I've been to capital campaigns. I've been a part of churches like this. I'm not asking you for any money. I'm asking God 
for $300,000. Matter of fact, I'm asking God for half a million because I don't want just what we need. I want more than we need so we can build other churches in Jesus' name. I actually told the Lord anything He'd give us above and beyond what we need, we're going to bless other churches. Can I get a better amen for that? That's, listen, so I've, I'm already talking to God. I'm just asking you to talk to God. The only thing I'm asking you to do is ask God. What do you want me to do? How can I get involved in this miracle? And so uh, over the next several weeks, you're going to hear us roll out our, our generosity uh, initiative about how you can get involved, that we raise $300,000. And I want you to start asking God today, what, what part do I play? Tell me what I can do. I've never asked you for anything, and let me be really frank with you. I'm not asking you for this. I'm asking God. See, you, don't, you, you may not understand this, but you're not our source. God's our source. <laughs> But I am going to ask you to ask God. And whatever God tells you to do, I want you to do that generously and faithfully. And, and I'm going to ask you over the next several weeks and the next several months, God, what would you have me to do? And we'll, we'll, we'll roll out. You'll see how you can be involved in that. We'll take a miracle offering at the end of the year in our legacy offering season. We'll take that one groundbreaking offering. And then we'll have a, a few months after that where we can still pledge and give towards this miracle. How many of you believe God has a miracle for us and we can raise 300 that We can raise more than that. Come on. God, God's not going to give us just what we need. He's going to give us more than we need. So we can bless others. Say amen to that. Don't pray for just what we need. I'm asking God for more than we need so we can be a blessing to others around us. By the way, in the middle of all of this, we're investing in other churches who are building buildings. Why in the world would we write checks to other churches who are building buildings while we need a building? I'll tell you why. Because I believe in this principle. We're going to put, we're going to sow where God, where we want to grow. We're going we're to be who we ask you to be. We're going to be a part of the miracle in their church and God's going to give us a miracle in ours. Can I get a better amen, everybody? I want you to pray. I want you to give. And then here's, the, here's an exciting one. I'm really super excited about this. No, I, almost no one knows this but my staff. We don't keep a lot of secrets from our dream team, but uh, we've kept this one from you. And that is, I, I, I want you to go, and I want you to join me next, uh, next Sunday. Uh, next Sunday is going to be a special uh, Sunday, September the 5th. At 6 o'clock at night, September the 5th, Sunday, September the 5th at 6 p.m., we're going to be in that building, and we're going to dedicate that building to the glory of God, everybody. We're going to have a big prayer meeting there, big time of prayer and worship on Sunday, September the 5th at 6 o'clock, a big night of prayer and praise. Uh, you're going to be able to see the layout. Uh, we'll, we'll do our best. It's still a shell. It has no AC. It has no power. It has no bathrooms. It has floors and walls, everybody. That's all I can promise you, okay? It's got floors and walls, but we're going to do our best to keep you safe. But I want you to be there and join us. I want everybody in this church to be there that day. We'll do our best to kind of lay out where all the rooms are going to be. That way you can kind of visualize that. We're going to have a bunch of bottles of oil. And right now we're not going to write everything on walls and scriptures and all that. Not, not, not yet. We're still making sure that uh, we're not going to keep those walls, you know. And we've got to paint over all your scriptures. But anyway, uh, we're, 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 I tell you what we are going to do. We're going to have bottles of oil everywhere. And we're going to anoint that place. Give it back to God. We're going to believe God to use it to reach thousands of people in the hill country. Come on, everybody. It's going to be an exciting season. So join me next Sunday. I'll send you all the details in an email. You'll get everything from our church and our team this week. Are you excited about where we're headed? Can, come on, everybody. Are you excited about moving forward together? It's going to take all of us. I told our team last night. I told my staff last night. None of us are as good as all of us. None of us are as good as all of us. None of us can do what God has called all of us to can do. If God's called our entire church, it's not going to just be me. It's not going to just be Brandy. It's not going to just be our staff. It's not just going to be you. It's not just going to be our dream team. God's going to bring people, reach people. God's going to use you and in this miracle to bring about the kingdom of God. And I want you to keep asking God, tell me how I can get involved. And then join me next Sunday night. Let's, we're just going, it's going to be a big celebration, and I'm super excited about it. Are you there? Say amen. amen. All right, got to preach to you. i got 15 minutes to preach this, this, the rest of this to you. We are in a series called Planted and Flourishing. Super excited about that. Uh, I'm wrapping up that series today. Going to be a great time. Next week's, uh, not, not only this, but next week's child dedication. So I'm super excited about that. We're dedicating babies. We're dedicating buildings. Come on, everybody. It's dedication weekend. Going to be a great, great season. You ever had somebody that told you this was the best thing they ever had, and you tried it, and it wasn't the best thing you've ever had? 
You ever had somebody tell you, man, you got to come, you got to come try these tacos. And you try these tacos and you're like, these ain't torchies. I don't care what you say. This is not tacos. Uh, matter of fact, when we started the church, there was uh, there's somebody on, on our team uh, when we first started, and I would tell them about uh, Mary's tacos. Where's all my Mary's tacos? People at yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah, yeah. They're all over. Now, now, Helotus has got a new one, and Kerrville, and, and Bernie, and, 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 and anyway, they're expanding, and, and they were telling us all about it. And she was like, "Those aren't real tacos." I was like, "Honey, God's gonna curse you. You keep talking like that, okay? These are real tacos." But everybody's got their favorite place. Everybody's got that one place you go to. You, you ever get you ever get a phone call about free trips, you know, and you think, man, this is going to be good. And I'm on. They're going. They're, I, I don't know why, uh, Brandy. They just invited me to, to to the Caribbean. I don't think they want anything from me. This seems legit, you know. I I went ahead and gave them my credit card. It seems right to me. I don't know. I, there's this Nigerian prince. He knew my name. He said he had money for us. We're trying to build a church. I believed him. I I mean I. Maybe he's a missionary. I didn't know. I gave him our credit. You ever had anybody? It seemed too good to be true. There's certain stuff that seems too good to be true until you experience it. And then when you experience it, you're like, man, that's the best I've ever had. Like, for instance, the best barbecue. I'm telling you now, write this down. The best barbecue in all of San Antonio is on Broadway in Alamo Heights. It's called Smoke Shack. It's the best barbecue. I don't want to hear your barbecue. I don't want to eat your brisket. I don't want you to tell me about your little food trailer you know about in the middle of the hills. The best barbecue in all of San Antonio is Smoke Shack on Broadway. It just is. But you don't know that till you go and experience it. There's some stuff you just got to experience for yourself. You're not going to believe me till you show up and you get the brisket mac and cheese. I'm giving you good notes to write down. And when you get the brisket mac and cheese, you're going, you're, you're going to bow your head in thanks to God. And you're going to mention my name. Thank you for my pastor that brought me to this mac and cheese that I'm experiencing. There's just some stuff that you can't help but tell. And then you're going to tell everybody about the mac, like I do. I tell everybody that I meet the best mac and cheese, the best barbecue in all of San Antonio, Texas is Smoke Shack on Broadway. It's an old, it's a little bitty old building. It's terrible looking. Don't go, don't go looking for cleanliness. Clean, clean stuff isn't good. Come on, everybody. If they, if the rating's above an 80 in there, don't eat it. You can't eat at a place like that. You got to go somewhere a little dirty that they built, they baked in dirt to the brisket. Are you still with me? It's the best place. And you got to experience it. The truth of the matter is, there's some stuff you just got to share when you experience it. And miracles are those kind of things. And we're in a miracle season, and when you meet Jesus, when you meet miracles, when you have miracles, I want to talk to you for 10 or 15 minutes about telling your story and the testimony of your story. Simon Peter in the New Testament follows Jesus. You know the story. He's a fisherman. Seems too good to be true. Honestly, he's got a loud mouth. He cusses all the time. He's, he's got a terrible attitude. Uh, but he met Jesus, and his life is transformed radically. In Acts 4 and 20, this is what he said about Jesus. Acts 4 and 20, the New Living Translation says, We cannot stop telling people about everything we have seen and heard. We cannot, it's, 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 it's a little bad English, but we can't stop telling people. We can't stop sharing about everything we have seen and we have heard. Heard Over the next uh, three years after Jesus finds Peter, then Peter experiences the miraculous. He had a front row seat to everything Jesus did. He didn't, just, he didn't just hear about blind eyes open. He saw blind eyes open. He didn't just hear about Jesus walking on the water. He walked on the water with Jesus. He'd experienced it with Jesus. And then he ends up in Acts 4 going, hey, listen, I got to tell you about it, not because I heard somebody, but because I saw it with my own eyes. I've experienced grace for myself. I had a front row seat to it, and I can't can't keep it to myself. Can I get a better amen about that? I love going to Spurs games, especially when they win. I love going to Spurs games because Spurs are winners. I don't understand people who go to Rockets games or Mavericks games. Why would you want to go to a sports team that doesn't win? But I love going to Spurs games. But I worked for a pastor in Austin who had season tickets to the Spurs game. Now, I love going to Spurs game just because I love the Spurs. But I'll sit a little bit higher up. I'll sit in the nosebleeds because your boy's not making a whole lot. All right, everybody? So, I mean, they, they, they don't give these tickets away. And so I, I'll sit in the, in the top. But my pastor... 
My pastor had season tickets to the Spurs. And I don't know what package he had. It was an anointed package that I'm asking God for. He had this anointed package that he could pick. It's a true story, David. That he could pick what games he wanted to go to. And in that package, Brandon, you know this. He had front row. We had courtside seats for a few games in the season. Anybody know what I'm trying to say there? And one day he brought me to the Spurs game front row seat because I'm anointed and he's anointed and I'm excited about going to the Spurs game. Now listen, going to a Spurs game and sitting up top is special when they win. It's amazing. It used to be a whole lot more amazing when we had better team. Anyway, it was an amazing season. But when you go down to the front row, when you're on the court, when people are sweating on you, I'm not normally into that, but I'm really enjoying being on the, come on, everybody, this courtside seat and sweat slinging. There's just something about it. Seeing it for myself on the courtside. Listen to me. You and I are in the middle of a courtside seat to a miracle, and you cannot, we cannot keep this to ourselves. We can't. Not hoard what God's doing. We got to tell. I've seen too much. I've heard too much. God's been with me. I've seen miracles in our church. I've seen miracles in my life, and I can't keep it to myself. Say amen to that. Peter even saw him after he was resurrected. Acts 1 and 3 says, During the 40 days after Jesus suffered and died, he appeared to the apostles from time to time. I don't have time to tell you this, but wouldn't this be funny? If every once in a while you just saw a dead guy show up, that's exactly what it says. He appeared to the apostles from time to time. You know what I mean? Like they're at dinner and all of a sudden, there he is. I want to do that after the resurrection. Anyway, he appears to the disciples from time to time. And he proved to them in a lot of ways that he was actually alive. And he talked to them about the kingdom of God. Verse 8, skip down in in Acts 1 verse 8. Then he says, oh, by the way, after I've appeared to you and talked to you and shown you and so you know... Verse 8 says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, but not just power so you can be full of power, power so that you can be my, everybody shout witnesses. Shout witnesses. I want you to be my witnesses. I want you to tell people about me everywhere. Write this in your notes. God is calling you and I to be the witness to the miracle. You will be my witnesses. You will be my witnesses. You don't have front front row seats just so you can color commentate everything going on. You don't have front row seats to a miracle just so you can go tell everybody about the miracle. You don't have front row seats just so you can say, well, I would do it this way or I think I should do it this way. I didn't share all of this miracle with you just so I could tell you. No, I shared it to you because I want to point you back to Jesus who if he can do it for us, he can do it for you. I want to point you to a miracle worker in a miracle season that God can do anything, that anything is possible. I don't want you to just sit around the campfire and sing songs to each other. I don't want City Hills to just be a holy huddle where it's us four and no more. Everybody here saved. Everybody looks like us. Everybody talks like us. Everybody votes like us. No, no, no. I I got a front row seat to a miracle, and I got to tell everybody that I know I got power from God. I got something from God. I got to share it. I got to tell it you. You are my witnesses. I don't know how to witness, Pastor. That seems big. I don't know how to do it. Write this down. Witnessing isn't big. It's not, it doesn't require a whole lot. Being a witness, write this down, is simply one beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. It's just one hungry person who says, hey, 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 I've been where you are. Hey, my marriage was falling apart like yours was. Hey, I've been an addict just like you were an addict. Hey, I know what it's like to to have physical ailment and and worry and the doctor tell me it's not going to work out. I've been where you are, but I found somebody who heals and I found somebody who puts back together. And I found somebody who meets me right where I am and heals me and delivers me and sets me free. I, it's just one beggar going, hey, 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 now I'm not special. We're not, God, God doesn't love us more than he loves you. I just found where bread is. Come follow me where bread is. I've just found somebody who can help me and heal you and move in your life. Say amen to that. I've just found somebody. Second Corinthians, Paul says, all of this, Second Corinthians 4, all of this is for your benefit. And as God, God's grace, listen, here, here's, here's the verse over this church I want to I want to I want to preach to you today. As God's grace reaches more and more people, as God's grace reaches more and more people, there will be great thanksgiving, and God will receive more and more glory. 
I don't want it just for us. I don't want people to say, man, what a revival church that is. Man, what an amazing church that is. No, no, no. I don't want it for our glory. As we reach more and more people, as we use buildings and schools and places, and as we, as we build, as we continue to move, I don't want it for us. As we reach more and more people, I want there to be great thanksgiving in the hill country. And I want God to receive more and more glory from our church. Can I get a better amen, everybody? I want more and more people to receive grace because you have received grace grace and I want you to share that grace write this in your notes because found people find people found people find people in the San Antonio area alone within 30 miles of this location and our new location there are 1.5 million people who self-identify as not connecting to a local church and don't have a vibrant relationship with Jesus these are hopeless people These are people without Christ. These are people who aren't in a vibrant, life-giving relationship. Listen, this is why we have to get permanent as soon as possible. This is why we have to move into this building. i got to tell you, it is not so you and I don't have to move cases in and out. That's a positive. By the way, after church today, it's a positive. All right. I always like that we're going to share all of our updates to only the setup and takedown team for our progress for our new building. It's a positive. All right, everybody. This is our last portable place. Did I tell you this is our last portable location, everybody? All right. But listen, it's not about that. It's not about that. It's, I, we're building a building because found people have to tell more. Fun, that we we got to keep reaching people. We got to keep building. We got to have more ministry. We got to have more services. We got to stay longer. We got to have Saturday night church, Wednesday night church, Friday night church, Sunday night church. We got to keep reaching men and women. We got to keep reaching young people and students and children. We got to keep hosting conferences and freedom and small group and Bible studies. We got to do more. Why? Because more people are going to hell and we got to do everything we can to populate heaven and depopulate hell. Say amen to that everybody. I want you to feel the urgency not of getting permanent for us. I want you to feel the urgency of found people. Find people. I want want you to know that that, that you didn't didn't just accidentally show up here. That there's so many people who are hurting and so many people who need hope. Their answer is not in in, in a pill bottle. It's not in entertainment, it's not in money, it's not in sex, it's only in Jesus. It's only in Jesus. By the way, let me go ahead and correct some of your language. You didn't find him, he found you. You didn't find him, he was never lost, he found you. I'll show it to you in God's word. John 1 and 43 says, the next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Look at the next words. And he found Philip. Jesus Finding Philip said to him, follow me. You you, you know how to be a witness. You know how to tell people about miracles. You know how to tell people about what God's done for you. Write this in your notes. You got to answer the question, when did grace find you? When did grace find you? When did grace find you? I remember the moment that Brandy and I met and she found me. I remember the moment that I'm kidding. I remember the moment that, that I, I, I remember. I remember where we were. You you got you got to remember when grace found you. You got to remember you weren't always saved. I know you were raised in a Christian home, but I know your high school lives you weren't saved. Come on, everybody. I was not saved. I was raised third, fourth generation in a spirit filled church, but I was not saved. I was going to church, but brother wasn't saved. Are you with me? I hadn't. I wasn't living uh, for Jesus. I, I, he didn't have my whole heart in that season. But I remember when grace found me. Listen. I I could not save myself. I couldn't take enough classes. I couldn't check enough boxes. I couldn't dress right. I couldn't obey the rules right. I couldn't do the rituals right. I was lost and I couldn't save me. And I remember when grace found me. I remember when grace found me. And you got to remember that grace found you messed up, broke, upset, addicted, broken apart, divorced, separated, hurting, in a bind. And God found you. And if you're going to be a witness, if you're going to tell more people about what God's done in your life, you've got to remember when grace found you. And then listen, the amazing thing happens in his life, and I'm almost done. John 1, it continues on like this. Remember, Jesus finds Philip. Verse 44 says, Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was in the town of Bethesda, and I'm sorry, Bethsaida, and Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one who Moses wrote about in the law, about whom the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of, jo- of Joseph. Now watch, watch, watch this. Jesus finds Philip, and Philip finds Nathaniel. Jesus finds Philip, and Philip finds Nathaniel. Here's the second thing. I only have two points because I gave you three up front. 
You got to know when grace finds you. And you got to answer this question. Write this down. And here, here's, honestly, here's the question for the next season we're in. Here's the question for the next, I think the next six to nine months, maybe the next 12 months that God's asking you, that God's asking us. And it's this, who is counting on you? Who's counting on you? Who's counting on you to tell them Jesus loves them? Who's counting on you to call them after church and go, I'm, I missed you in church? Who's counting on you to lead a small group this semester? Small group semesters are launching in just the next couple of weeks. And who's counting on you to, to, to invite them into their small group? Who's counting on you to open your home and share a meal with somebody? Who's counting on you? God's put people in your life. God's put people in your sphere of influence. There's somebody counting on you to tell them the story of hope and life. There's a single mom in your world that's hoping for a smile and hoping for a hug and hoping for an invitation to our fifth birthday there there's a family who just moved to town and started a new job and their kids are in a brand new school and they left everything they knew behind and they're desperate to find a new family and they're desperate to find a new church who's counting on you there's a newly married couple there's a newly divorced man there's a co-worker who's battling depression there's a cousin who's been asking you for prayer somebody in your world God's put somebody who's counting on you to be hope grace Who's counting on us? Church, the reason why we have to move forward now, the reason why now is the time, the reason why now is the time that I boldly ask you to ask God about how you can get involved, the reason why now is the time for us to get permanent and not portable, the reason why now is the time for us to build this for the glory of God is because people are counting on us. Our city is counting on us. The hill country is counting on us. Bernie, Fair Oaks is counting on us. It's counting on us. Nathaniel then asks, it's crazy. John 1 continues, verse 46. Jesus of Nazareth, Philip says, and, 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 and Nathaniel says, Nazareth? <laughs> Is there anything good that can come out of Nazareth? A church and a school? <laughs> it's a, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. Is there anything good that can? $300,000? You've got to be crazy. <laughs> Is there anything? You know the building prices are up 50%. Why would we do it now? Why? This doesn't make any sense. Why, why is it? Why now? Is there anything good that can come out of it? I'm a skeptic. I got to see. I don't know. Verse 46 continues. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? And Nathaniel asked this. And Philip said the word I want you to live by. He said, just come and see. Just come and see. Just come see what God can do. Listen, just come see how God could use you. Just come see what God would do through you. Just come and see what God could do through this church. Thing. Just come next Sunday night and see how God could use this space to reach more people. Just come next Sunday and hear how God could use you. Just come the week after that and the week after that. Just come and see. Just bring people along for the journey. Just bring your whole small group. Just bring your whole family to church in this season. Just bring, just bring uh, uh, your coworkers and neighbors in this season. Now or when we get there? No, 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 right now. Because we, we, we're going to launch from here into there. Revival's not waiting on a building. Revival's waiting on us. Just me and you. Just bringing people. Just, hey, come and see. You don't have to argue with people. You don't even have to preach on Facebook. I know some of you think you're called to do that. Not y'all, but in the next service. You don't, have to do, you don't have to become an apologist. You don't have to argue with people. You don't have to debate anybody. All you got to do is, hey, just come see for yourself. Just come see. Just come see. Just come see. Matter of fact, I'm going to invite you to do that today. I'm going to invite you to come see today how God could change your life. I'm going to invite you to come and see how, how being born again can change everything in your life. I'm going to invite you to come today to grace and find hope today.